The Lord be with you. Welcome to this fourth and final week in the season of Advent in the year of our Lord 2020. Uh, this fourth week of Advent officially begins on Sunday, December 20th, and it carries us up through Christmas Day. So uh, as we've been saying, Advent is a very strange and special season. Um, it is a season mixed with both joy uh, and lament. Uh, it's very honest about the fact that the world is broken, uh, that we are broken and in need of a savior. Uh, that's what that first Advent was like. Uh, as the people of Israel were longing for that Davidic king, a Messiah, to come. Uh, I believe it is still like that for us in Advent, uh, as we await the return of our Savior and Messiah King. Uh, we recognize that our world is deeply broken and disturbed, uh, that things are not right with the world, uh, especially in this particular year as we see so much devastation, so much confusion, uh, so much tragedy because of COVID-19. Uh, it has disrupted just about every way of life for us. So our goal has been to still to be able to have a good Advent season. Uh, even if you can't gather in person, uh, at least there are these virtual opportunities through videos uh, to reflect upon our journey, our longing, uh, our wilderness, and our hope and expectation for that King to come. It is reiterated through uh, Christmas tide as we celebrate all of that expectation and celebration at Jesus' first coming, but that is to set the tone for us as we continue to hope and we continue to be expectant for his second coming. Uh, and we have used just sort of an untraditional means to journey through this Advent, following people who actually had to be on a journey, a journey that took a long time, uh, a journey that covered a long distance. Uh, it caused them to go through much struggle and intentionality, but in the end, it paid off. Uh, and this, of course, is the Magi who traveled from the Far East all the way to the little town of Bethlehem uh, to see that newborn king, especially when the rest of Israel didn't notice that he had been born. Uh, the cosmic signs were there, uh, but people had become so used to their current situations, their current troubles, their current trappings, that um, they didn't notice the things that these foreigners noticed. And uh, of particular interest for us over the previous three weeks has been the three gifts that the Magi brought. Uh, so Matthew chapter 2 is very specific that they brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. Uh, I think what we've learned over these previous weeks is that those gifts were very special in the ancient world. They were gifts that were offered to gods. Uh, they were gifts that were offered to special royal dignitaries. So uh, at the very least, the Magi are acknowledging that this child is special. Uh, this child needs to get the best gifts in that ancient world. And uh, that this child's God, the God of Israel, even though he wasn't the God of the Magi, um, they accepted him, worshipped him just as if he was. Uh, of devotional value with those three gifts. We have talked about how gold sort of represents our bringing our best. During this Advent, are we truly bringing our best to God? Uh, frankincense is used uh, in offering, in worship. Uh, so we are we actually intentionally worshiping God and not just going through the checklist of religious activities? Do we have a heart of worship when we come to God? Uh, and myrrh could be used uh, to anoint a body for burial. Uh, so are we acknowledging the sacrifice of the Messiah? And are we choosing to live our own lives in a sacrificial, loving way, just like he did? Because again, we are his followers and we are his disciples. So now that we have covered those three gifts, uh, the question for this fourth week is, 
uh, what's left in that story to cover. Uh, and what I want to talk about is sort of the missing gift. So uh, let me indirectly imply what I think is in the text there by jumping ahead to a different text in the New Testament letters. Uh, our reading today is going to come from uh, the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, where it says this. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. So there has been this uh, period of suffering for certain people of God, and the apostle is trying to collect offerings from a wide variety of churches, churches who didn't necessarily know the church or the region that was suffering. But because we are all God's people, uh, we are expected to support one another, even financially, to help with each other's burdens. So the apostle is appealing to them uh, to give generously. He says, because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. These are the words of our eternal God. Now what you get at the end of that passage is that particular word, gift. And it would be very easy to sort of just roll it into everything else that the apostle is talking about. Uh, because he needs the Corinthian churches to give generously, uh, and because he knows that's going to be an example for other churches and praise is going to be lifted up to God because they're going to see these churches' uh, generosity and he's looking to glorify God. So you could roll that word gift into the financial gift that the Corinthian churches are going to donate. But what I want to focus on is that pronoun right before gift. It says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. I think what's being implied there is don't forget, before you give anything, God is the ultimate giver. God gave first, and he gave the best gift, the gift that we cannot put into words its value, and that is his own son, Christ Jesus, was given as a gift to the people of God, but also as a gift to the world. So as we finish our journey in Advent, as we come to the manger, and we rehearse the celebration of the newborn king, and we think ahead to the return of the king, uh, keep in mind that all of those gifts that we talked about and all of those postures and attitudes of worship are only because God gave first, God gave his best. Jesus himself is the gift. And therefore, we give all of our gifts in order to give thanks to God and to give our allegiance to Jesus and to give our best and our blessing and our help to a world that so desperately needs us to be the mediators on behalf of God, extending to them reconciliation to God. That is provided only through this indescribable gift, Jesus himself. So beloved, as you go through this uh, very fragmented Christmas season, uh, as you think about our culture of gift buying and gift giving, uh, what I want you to remember and not lose sight of is that all of that stems first from God has given to us. We have to first be thankful and appreciate the gift of Jesus. And then we want to give our best. We want to give worshipfully. We want to give sacrificially in love. 
because Jesus has already done all those things for us. So may you continue to have a blessed Advent. May you have a very merry and happy Christmas. May you appreciate the gift that God has given. May we wait and long for Jesus to be formed within us by the work of the Holy Spirit. And may we look expectantly and hopefully for the return of Christ, because we know with him comes the kingdom from this age and forever into the ages to come. So in these days of ongoing pandemic, may the peace of God be with you. Amen.